street beat and, and toggle. So Jan and, um, and Damian, I think you guys have, in, in many ways, similar approaches um, to the wealth management space. So perhaps, Jan, tell a little bit about the founding of Toggle. You, you mentioned it a little bit in the introduction. And maybe take us a, a layer deeper on sort of your product and the service that you provide. What we noticed, effectively, as I mentioned when we were still at, uh, at a private bank, is that somebody who was interacting with clients and advisor would spend quite a lot of time really looking for the information to either answer a question, do a little bit of analysis, and so on. And so it seemed like a lot of that was because either the resources were not immediately available or because they were scattered across different platforms so they would be logging into one and then another one and so on. And so we thought, wouldn't it be nice if you could combine it all into a single platform so that you would enable an advisor to do virtually on-the-spot analysis as they're on the call. So when a, a client is expressing a concern about their portfolio, you could both run the analysis right there and then, or potentially look into what the house view is on a specific question and so on. And so we realized that actually, particularly with the advent of these large language models, you could marry a very intuitive user experience of a large language model with some of the state-of-the-art analytics that had been around for a long time but had a barrier to usage. When everybody have data and AI and speed, um, then you can't do that manually. I think that's missing to 350 million people worldwide and more coming. India is growing tremendously as market. China is also coming uh, very strong. And all these people are still trading like it's 1960, no? And uh, with very elegant tool, beautiful, but still right. instant technology. So I think there is a big opportunity to democratize this technology, give access to everybody. Uh, talk a little bit about the vision for what, you know, what got you going with, uh, with range, and also maybe comment on AI and how it impacts your business. Sure. Because one of the things we think about is AI is such a fundamental technology, you can see it being applied all the way from marketing to customer service to you know, a security selection to all kinds of things within the wealth management uh, business. Range's entire business is built on trying to help a very specific type of customer, 35 to 45 year old millennials, much like you know, the audience Betterment serves, uh, high income earning, not just techies, a lot of entrepreneurs, doctors, lawyers, other professionals, white collar professionals that are young, have a ton of money, or are accruing wealth very quickly, um, but they don't want to go to the traditional advisor. They don't want to pay 1%. They just want everything fast, accurate, data-driven, at their fingertips, collaboratively. And so that's what we're doing at Range, is try and provide these services in a way this new generation wants. And the, and the only way you can do that is through machine learning and AI. What we are finding as um, folks grow into either inheriting more money, um, having more complexity, so saving for education for children, weddings, homes, you know, whatever the, whatever the life event is, we find that talking to a human can be incredibly powerful. And so I don't want to get away from the topic of AI because I do think there's an opportunity for these two things to live alongside, but I don't think it's that AI replaces the human advice piece because there is a peace of mind element here that is really, really important for a lot of people. And I think there are people sure. totally comfortable with a digital solution, but there are other people who are not. The core of what artificial intelligence and machine learning can do um, for society, right now we think it's just ChatGPT, but that's just one feature of one product that they've been working on for, gosh, 11 years, I think, right? AI has a long way to go. If, if you think about like a marathon, we're literally on mile half. <laughs> Of, of 26 miles. And so there are a lot of people trying to win this marathon in the first mile. We've got a long way to go. You know, sort of that segues into some of the challenges around using AI and LMs, which we're starting to get into a little bit. Maybe, Jan, go to you um, in terms of how do you think about that for, for Toggle? The way we think about AI in the context of wealth management and advising is it's at a stage of apprenticeship. I think it can work hand in hand with a human advisor. It's obviously able to assist in a lot of tasks that make the advisor a lot more productive. And I think we'll worry about where that takes us in five to 10 years, kind of as we are on that journey. Our solutions have focused on, for example, gating models. They have focused on making sure that the sources of information that the models are able to access have themselves been verified for integrity and so on. And so you can limit the scope instead of giving you some sort of like a generalist model, 
that can answer questions about chess, but can also get it very wrong when it comes to investment advice. You can have almost more like a, an investing savant that knows a lot about investing, a lot about data, can do calculations very quickly, but is narrowly specialized. Right. And so you really reduce the probability of those kinds of errors. Human in the loop is not, the, I mean, that's not a scalable solution beyond a certain point, right? Mm. So Damian, how, how do you think about it? Because you need technology to then um, uh, sort of provide the controls around this other technology. So basically everybody knows that uh, the intelligence that you need to answer a question is much higher than the intelligence that you need to verify if the question is correct. So if you ask generative AI, like uh, ChatGPT4, to come up with an answer, the intelligence that you need to verify if that answer is correct is much smaller. So if you already put two AIs different to check one with each other, you already clean up a lot of hallucination. This way is extremely scalable because uh, you actually, the more you use it, actually the better it gets. In terms of you know, the next five to 10 years out, how do you think about the future of wealth management? Um, there's gonna continue to be a really important combination of sort of human and technology. And I think that the great sort of businesses and brands are going to magically pair technology and service. I think the biggest shifts you're gonna see is over the next five, 10 years in, is gonna be in pricing. And I think the prices for access to wealth management and what that provides will drastically come down and tens if not hundreds of millions of people will get access to something that's only been available to the 1% over the next decade. I don't think that the pricing will necessarily come down. I think that it will be more like cars. I think the quality will improve dramatically. I think that what AI will do is it's going to give advisors the kind of superpowers that allow them to serve more clients better but I don't think that it's necessarily gonna be a, kind of a, a pricing war in that sense.